Hello and welcome back. It's Puzzle Time with Sudoku Sleuth and happy Valentine everyone. Now it's a particularly special day for a couple of reasons. Now Gobbler, one of the phenomenal constructors that we have featured on this channel repeatedly, um, got in touch with me a little while ago and basically suggested that here is a new puzzle that he's going to be intending to release on Valentine's Day and if I would be interested in um, sort of recording it and making sure that it hits the day so it goes out on Valentine's Day as opposed to, you know, one or two days afterwards. And, you know, of course I said yes. I mean, there wasn't really much of a debate. Now, the second reason it's a bit of a special day is um, it is actually my birthday. So I am born on Valentine's Day. Hopefully, Mrs. Sleuth and I are actually doing something romantic on the day. We're getting to enjoy this day together. Uh, and that's why it's actually quite lucky for me that Gobbler got in touch. And it means that I'm sort of off the hook in terms of having to record something for today. Now, what you have in here in this thumbnail is, well, Sleuth and Mrs. Sleuth and the happy romance story that blossomed. I hope she doesn't see this now. 12, 13 years ago, roughly, there or thereabouts, which is essentially when we had our first date. So we went out for a dinner together. After me, let, let me just restart that, actually. I kept asking her out for something like four or five years before she actually said yes. And this was 12 years ago when we finally had our first date. Now, we ended up in a dinner somewhere, and then we walked um, across one of London's parks, the iconic Hyde Park. She was in high heels, just as you see here in this thumbnail. And uh, despite that, she managed to walk most of Hyde Park. We went for dinner in Notting Hill. We ended up in Mayfair. We walked across the entire thing. And she assures me the date was going so well that she basically never really felt it. Um, young love and all that. I can't imagine that today, if we ended up walking or recreating that date, that she wouldn't feel it. At the same time, you know, wisdom uh, for Mr. Sleuth, I wouldn't have... I don't know how I just didn't notice it, ask about her, make sure that there's some, <laughs> something else that we're doing other than walking, you know, kilometers and kilometers and miles and miles in high heels for her. Right, enough of this. Let's take a look at today's puzzle. So it is all about Valentine, and I think Gobbler has done an absolutely phenomenal job just capturing the essence of that. We've got, of course, the heart with the arrow that you saw on the thumbnail being shot out from Cupid, and there you go, blossoming love, uh, hopefully for many of you out there, or at least continuing it. Now, this is a fusion of many of Gubbler's variant rule sets. So I'll take you through the ones that are, I'm going to say, standard variant rules. First one is, of course, normal Sudoku rules apply, so that means place the digits 1 to 9 once each in every row, in every column, and in every 3x3 three three box. Then we have the equality and shift to lines I'm going to come back to. Kropke dots, we've got only black dots today. A black dot between cells means that they are in a 2 to 1 ratio. So for example, if this is a 4, this would be 1 or 4. And as long as one is in a 2 to 1 ratio, as in one of them is double the other, you're good to go. And not all dots are shown, so nothing wrong with me having something like this. That would be absolutely fine. It doesn't have to have a black dot between them. We also have X's. So adjacent cells connected with an X must sum up to 10. And again, not all X's are shown. So continuing with the two example, if that was a two, this would have to be an eight, so that these two cells that are joined by an X here in the middle add up to 10. And once again, nothing wrong with me having three and seven next to one another. The fact that these two neighboring cells add up to 10 without an X between them doesn't break the puzzle. Then we've got a couple of my favorite new variants, equality cages and shifter lines. Now, I feel like we've been, because we've been steadily working through equality cages, this is probably the one that almost flows naturally to me at this point. So an equality cage is, it said you have to have an equal number of low digits. So one, two, three, or four. Let's, for the sake of our example, pick two here. And an equal number of high digits. So essentially one of six, seven, eight, or nine. If there is one low digit, there has to be one high digit. But it doesn't stop at just that. You need to have an equal number of odd digits and an equal number of even digits. So given we have an even digit in here, this has to be a, an odd digit. So six and eight won't work. 
This is a low even digit. This has to be a high odd digit. That is now a complete equality cage, obviously, once I pick one of these digits. But this kind of continues across um, any number of cages. If you've got, sorry, any number of cells in a cage, if this is four, you're going to have to have two evens, two odds, two lows, two highs. Now, the shifter lines are kind of the same concept, but applied in a line format, where and I'm going to pick this as an example. If these lines are the same polarity and parity when they're inside a box, so let's say two and four, they are low even digits. Whenever they cross into the other, you know, essentially that line is now crossing into a different box, it has to either change polarity. So that could mean that it is now no longer two, four, it is now six, eight. That would be fine. That's one example. Or parity. So this is a low even digit, it can go to a low odd digit with one and three. What you cannot do is have seven or nine because you're changing both polarity and parity. Now, the last thing that's common between shifter lines and equality cages is none of them can have a five. I guess it causes a little bit of confusion as to whether it's low or high. It's clearly odd, it's not confusion in there. But um, no fives are allowed on any of these. I'm going to call them. Um, yeah, Gublor hasn't actually named the color. So I'm going to call this some sort of lime green line. So no fives in those and no fives in any of the cages. Now, uh, if you feel like uh, reminiscing about your own love story and you want to celebrate Valentine in style, mm -hmm. I imagine the next day, of course, because you may be out on a date with your loved one. Uh, link will be in the description down below, as usual, for you to play along. And with that said, all I have to do is restart the clock and see how I get on. And I'm just sort of hesitating on restarting the clock because I'll probably restart a second time. And I can't remember. It was one of the shifter lines that I featured a long time ago like a month ago, two months ago. And I can't, and, um, and apologies, I do not remember who was it that um, wrote this in the comments. I have a suspicion, but I don't want to sort of give credit to the wrong person or take away credit from the correct person. So something that I just want to sort of draw your attention to when it comes to shifter lines, in fact, it's kind of applicable in equality cages, but in particular for shifter lines is if you think about this almost like a, a circle of digits. Remember, with a shifter line, you're ever only shifting either parity, so the low odd digit becomes a low even digit, so the 1, 3 can go to a 2, 4, or polarity, the low odd digit can now become a high odd digit. So the way to almost think about this is this is like a circle, and you can always go around the circle either clockwise or, sorry, I, I said clockwise and gave you an anti-clockwise example, clockwise or anti-clockwise. What you can never do is essentially shift across diagonally like that. So the 1, 3 can go to 7, 9 or 2, 4, or the 2, 4 can go to 6, 8 or 1, 3, but the 6, 8 obviously cannot go to a 1, 3, it's shifting both. Now, the reason this is particularly interesting, and I think it's going to be very helpful for our puzzle, and I'm doing all of this before I restart the clock so I don't have to explain it under my solve time, cheating a bit, is you can essentially almost group these two in a kind of a very unnatural set of colors, because normally you end up looking at this as, you know, it's either going to be if red is, you know, an odd digit I will, I will apply red consistently as odd digits, or if uh, blue is a low digit, then I will apply blue consistently as a low digit. But I think essentially the way to almost think about this when it comes to these shifter lines is if this cell is blue, one of two, four, or seven, nine, the next you have to shift colors. So as soon as you cross to a different box, you now have to be six, eight, or one, three. So keep this in mind this pattern, which um, I'm almost certainly going to redraw again as soon as I restart the clock, because it will help us, I suspect, as we start thinking around what's going on around this shift to line. Right, uh, enough talking. Let me restart the clock and see how I get on. So it was 1, 3, 
two, four, six, eight, and seven, nine. And I'm going to label these as, I don't know, blue, and these two as red. And really, whilst I was taking this, uh, excuse me, very lengthy explanation, I already spotted almost a break in here in that this has to be 2, 4. And the reason I say it has to be 2, 4 is any two cells on a shifter line, I'm trying to find others in the same box, have to be both the same parity and polarity. So the options are 1, 3, clearly not connected by a black dot, 2, 4, are connected by a black dot, 6, 8, doesn't work, 7, 9, can't even occur on a black dot. So this is forced to be 2, 4, and this is red. And we can start this coloring journey that I've just described as we enter in and out of different boxes. So I'm pausing for a second. I mean, the line continues, so this is definitely blue. But I haven't really thought about equality cages, and it's probably worthwhile thinking about these. So let's take a look at this example first. This is 2, 4, which forces, we've got two low even digits. I need two high odd digits, which are 7 and 9 in here, which notice they are the same color. Did I just, yeah, I meant to color these. So I'm actually thinking that Equality cages have to have the same color. And let me just kind of try this in a few different ways. This is red, which means that this is seven, nine. There's a second one. Uh, I'm saying seven, nine. I'm just, this is an example. If this is seven, nine, remember these two cells have to be the same polarity and parity. So that would be a second seven, nine. And therefore, these would have to be two, four, just as we've done here. So a long way of saying that I think this entire equality cage is red. It is made up of the four digits that are 2, 4, 7, 9, just like this one is. And then this is from 1, 3, 6, and 8. And notice 3 and 6 are blue. I can't write them in here. But 2 and 4 work. So essentially, this is 2, 4. This can't be 3, 6. And either the 1 goes with a 2 or the 8 goes with a 4. Now, I'm guessing the logic continues. If this was a 1, this would have to be a high even digit from 6 and 8. So yeah, it is equality cages remain the same color. Fascinating. Um, I don't know if I want to pencil mark this, but obviously this is continuing, so this is the third one. Now, I've used three blues, and there are a total of four. This equality cage has to be red. As I continue on the shifter line, these two have to be red because I'm shifting colors as I cross the box. Therefore, all of this has to be red. And this, as a result, has to be 3-6. Three, 3-6. Six. Three, six. One, what? Hang on, what? Is it 2, 4 again? Yeah, because it has to be red. has to be joined with a black dot. Yeah, that is correct. That is red. Let me just double check this. Red, blue, red, blue. I made a mistake. Excuse me. Excuse me. Delete all of this. Let's try that again. Red, blue, all of this is blue now. This is definitely red. We're shifting colors. Red, that is looking, that stays red. That stays red. These have to be blue. This is now blue. That makes the entire cage blue. I've got four blues in here. This has to be red. I'm shifting colors. That is much better. Because, sorry, it's just I got to here. And I was sort of, in my mind, I kind of skipped ahead and I I knew this was going to be blue because of course I've used all four dead uh, red digits. And then I, I came back in here and I was thinking this is clearly going to break. So this is blue. These are blue. Which is, yeah, in fact, 3-6. So this is 3-6. This is 1-8. Um, what was my pencil? Yeah, whatever pencil marking I did here was incorrect. 
Notice from the 7, 9 and 2, 4 option, the only ones that are allowed to be on this black dot is a 2, 4. Now, the 2, 4 can only join with 1 and 8 from here, because obviously they can't remain with a 2, 4 because that's a different color. This 2, 4 gives me a 7, 9. This is a fourth red in the row, in row 4. So this is 7, 9. And what else can I see? I'm not sure. So this could be 1, 3, 6, or 8. This is... Do I know anything about this? I, I probably do. I just, I'm not sure yet what it is. Um, bit of a shame that I've kind of drawn these four up here because it feels like I'm confusing myself and starting to take a look at Sudoku and thinking, oh, well, you know, I've done all the fours or, or I've done all the blues. That's not entirely true. I really don't want to fall into that trap. Uh, let's think about X's for a second. So we've thought about equality cages. We've thought about shift to lines. Black dots can change color or stay the same color. So that's fine. We've, we've done both. We've done 3, 6, 2, 4, and 1, 2, or 8, 4. Now, we know that this is from 1, 3, 6, 8, this cell here. And then the opposite side of that would be either a 9, a 7, a 4, or a 2, which is, you can see, a red cell. So an X is always blue and red. And obviously we don't have 7, 9 as options in row 5. This is not 7, 9. And therefore this is not 1, 3. And this is 6, 8. This is a fascinating puzzle, Gobbler. Um, mm hmm. Sorry, I'm running out of steam a little bit. Just trying to think through. Where do I go next? I like. I just need more information. I just. I don't know where to find it. So you see, like I don't know enough for information. For example, about this cage. This could be. Two blues. There's no problem in the row or the box. Or it could be two reds. There's no problem in the box or the row, or frankly the columns. With three blues, that's fine. That could be another blue. So I need some somewhere else. I just need to get creative. And I'm kind of, I'm loathing doing this, but I just, I may have to do it. So this is one, three, six, or eight. If it's a one, that would be a two. Or three, six. Or eight, four. So these are the options that I have here. If this is two... That would be four, that breaks. So two is off the table, and therefore one is off the table. If that's four, that would be two, and it breaks again. So this is not four or two, because that would require a partner to four on the same shifter line. And therefore this is three, six. This has to be three, six. Three, six we've decided is blue. And it has to stay the same color. It's in the same box. If it's a three, that would be a one, plausible. That's a six, that would be eight. Still plausible. This column maybe, such as, where does five go? Nine minutes. How about a first digit? Five. I've done this so many times in equality cages and um, shift to lines where you know five doesn't go on them, but nevertheless, you just don't use it. And here's the first five. Goodness me. Right, let's think about these because we're so nearly done. This is a 1 8, for example. We're so nearly done. It's not 1 8, it's 1. Um, this is an X. I've used the following high digits 7 and 9 and 6. So 6, 7, and 9 are gone. This has to be 2 8. Um, I didn't mean to add an H, 8, and therefore this is a 1, and this is a 7. 
and this is a 3, and therefore this is a 6, this is an 8. Yeah, it's all going now. So I think you just needed to do a lot of intense thinking to start, and then you can actually make a bit of a break for it. Famous last words as he immediately gets stuck uh, right after. Do I have any knowledge of what's here? No. What about in there? Oh, that one gives me an 8 in here. That's lovely. Remember, these two, I know they're both blue, but they have to be the same parity and polarity. So essentially, there's a 6-8 in here, but it can't be on these two lines. So that's the 6. That 1 is not in here. That's a 3. That's a 1. So we've actually got more digits there than we might expect. Then we have in here, not 1-9, not 2-8, not four six. This is three seven. And that three forces in order. That's three. That's seven. Maybe worthwhile thinking about the equality cages. Just the challenges. They are different colors. The two is a is a red. The eight is a blue. So not exactly helpful. We can maybe think about this x next. Such as it's not it's not one. Technically, it could be two eight. It is not three seven. And it could be 4, 6, specifically in this order. And that's the... I am going to continue coloring. I don't know how useful this is, but I think it's useful keeping track of sort of how many blues and reds we've actually used in every row. Um, you can see 3, for example, just a bit of Sudoku is limited to one of these two cells. Take a look at this X now. It is not 1, 9, it is not 2, 8, and it's not 3, 7, because we kind of use the 3s. Yeah, so this is 4, 6. This 3, 6 pair tells us the order. That's 6, that's 4. This has to be a low odd digit. It is not a 3, it is a 1. This 4 looks up here. That's a... I broke it. How did I break it? When did I get to that this is an 8? What was the conclusion that got me here? Because this was 1 or, and I forced a 1 in here. So I think that I agree that this is an 8. I'm going to delete this for a second. Pardon me. This is now 8, 4. And therefore, it's not 1, 9. It's not 2, 8. Goodness me, it's not 3, 7, it's not 4, 6. Where did I go wrong here? Did I get this wrong with this 3, 7? Yes, I did. Sleuth. Sleuth, come on. Um, excuse me whilst I kind of unwind these mistakes that I made. I said it's not 1, 9 because of this 1. It's not 3, 7, duh. And it's not 4, 6, so I broke it again here. Unless that was meant to be 6 and 3. 3, 1, 6. Why did I conclude it was the other way around? Yeah, because I placed a 7 and 3. But now I can do 4 and 6. And that would be 4, 6, 4, and 6 in that order. And now 3 and 7 definitely works here. So that would be 9. That would be 3. That would be 7. And this 3 would need a high even digit, which is not 6. It's 8. Okay. A little bit uncomfortable with carrying on. I mean, it looks like I've sort of undone the damage, but... Not sure. Not sure at all. That 4 gives me a 2, gives me a 4, gives me a 2, gives me an 8, gives me a 1 and an 8. I still don't know what this is. It's 
sort of half tempted to write options in that equality cage. And I really emphasize the half tempted. You know, I can see, for example, that with the fours and nines, I am forced to put four and nine in here. And then you'd be very tempted to say, well, that's perfect. That makes a nice equality cage. But I just, I don't know what else goes in here. So I don't really want to do it. Twos, that's a two. Sevens are done. This is blue and it's not eight. You need a high digit in here and it's not six in this cell. This is the six. This is one or three. We may as well come back to these X's that I ignored. I strongly suspect this is still three, seven. It's just, I don't know the order of it because again, it's not one nine, it's not two eight, it's not four six. That is three, seven, that is still correct. Um, this is like just thinking about digits are available. Two and eight still works. Three, four, five, six, seven with a three. No, because it breaks this cell. Eight with a two doesn't. And then nine with a one seemingly does. Seemingly. So this is one eight, which is I am going to carry on coloring. Otherwise, I feel like I'm going to go off, off piste again like I did earlier. So we've got three blues, four reds, because we've got the two seven, the four nine. So in essence, we have a third blue. I mean, it's obvious now, these are two reds because I've got three blues in the row. So this is indeed four nine. And this is made up of one, three, five, and eight. You can see this one is not one, but it could be three, five, or eight. And this here is not eight, but it could be one, three, or five. I'm willing to pencil mark three. Can I do any more in here? Such as where does eight go in this box? It's there. I need a one, three, and a five. So fives, not in any of these, and I need four blues. These are all blue. This is, I'm going to say one, three, six. In fact, six, just Sudoku, that is six. This is the one, three that isn't part of that one, three, five. So this is one, three. It's a fascinating puzzle, Gobbler. Sorry about kind of mucking up the solve a little bit. One of these is a five. We still have one three eights on the loose. You can see that the ones are on this side, but it's not really helpful. Let's think about what these are. These are six and nine. Well, six and five, excuse me. These sixes gives me a six, a five. That six doesn't actually help me with this. So these. Ah, there. Eight, not in here. Eight in there. That's, as a result, not eight. It's a one, and therefore that's a nine. That's a three. That's a seven. That's a three. We need two, seven, and eight, I'm going to say. You can see now the two eights conspiring to remove everything, except in here. Then two, seven. That two tells me that's the seven. That's the two. And obviously that seven does the same thing as well. Then in here, we've got five and eight. And that eight tells me that's the eight. That's the five. No fives in here. That's a five. That one gives me a three. This is now a one five pair that I cannot resolve yet. And this is a one three pair that I cannot resolve yet either. Sorry, I'm still thinking about, or very irritated about that error that I made earlier, and I need to sort of move on so I can just focus in a productive manner. Have I not resolved this 3, 6? I haven't. Of course I have. That's an 8. That gives me a 6. That's a 3. This is from 2, 4, because we've got 7 and 9 done. 
one of these cells is a five with two or four, and I don't know what it is yet. You can see two four is not in this row in box eight. That's two four. Therefore, that's a nine. That's a four. And then I have three cells in here, which are, what did I say, five, seven, and nine? Except you've got five and seven lining up in the column. That's a nine. These are five sevens. Don't know what these are yet. Two, four, and nine, I do. That's a seven. That is unknown. That is two, four, not nine. It is just two, four. Back to coloring. We have everything except a one in here. That gives me the five. That gives me the one. That will once again give me the five. And then this is a two, four to complete the row. I have a second two, four with a nine, which I cannot place yet. And essentially, I've got two, four, and nine in here. And this is two, four, or nine. Obviously, I need two more of these in here somewhere, plus something else. What is that something else? Seven. That gives me a seven. These are from two, four, nines. We are kind of at the point, oh, the seven gives me a five. The seven, the one and three are resolved. Just need to pay attention. And now this is one and eight. So I'm kind of thinking we have to be able to resolve it, such as if this is an eight, that would require one or three, which is neither. So that's not an eight, that's a one. That can go with an eight. That's a two, that's an eight. And I think we're probably on the home stretch now. Just taking a look if there's anything obvious I've missed. And I admit I'm just not seeing it, at least not yet. What are these two cells? I need a five. That five is not in here. Um, I need a four somewhere. I don't know where that is. What is that cell? That is a nine. This is four and six. I cannot resolve them yet, surprisingly. These are three red cells. I need a fourth. Hmm. Am I going to color here? I'm tempted to. I mean, I shouldn't need to. It's just for some reason I'm struggling to see it. How do I actually finish this puzzle? Maybe I'm just missing something. Right, let's just think about what these are. This is not two. So I've got a second four nine in one of these two cells. Plus... Five and the five goes in here. This is four or nine. Well, it's not a nine, it's a four, it's a two. This is a nine. No nines in any of these cells. That's the nine. These now are not nines, neither are these. These are two fours. That two gives me the order four, two, four, two. That four gives me the six. The four, I think we've got it. I think we've got it. Not too early to celebrate, hopefully. Three, one, two, three, four, five, and six for the finish. Oh, excuse me. I haven't resolved these. Two, four for the finish. Beautiful puzzle, Gubbler. Yes, sorry for the screw up about the three, seven pair in here I, earlier. I don't know why I just went off piece there. But a, a phenomenal puzzle. And really, happy Valentine's to you all. I hope that you actually get to enjoy it with your loved one your partner, um, or if you don't have one, that, you know, use it an excuse to ask someone out and uh, be brave and experience something truly magical. Thank you, Gobbler, very much for the puzzle and for the early access. Um, uh, I hope that you guys enjoy it on the day and see you back for the next video. Bye-bye for now.